Oh my eyes! Oh, oh. Now after an intro that scares everybody off from, from playing this anyway. Yes, 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 yes. Change my equipped item or I could just do it properly. I guess, yeah. Well, waving the heart at people seems like... Somewhere in the basements below, Hound kills Hound. And money changes oh really? I, as a modern gamer, foolish person, do not totally already know that and stuff. That, that's very useful. How do I get? Do I have to go up to go down? What a crazy notion. Anyways, I missed a couple of things last time, or or something. So yeah, I don't know what these electrical things are all the time. But yeah, I missed some stuff. So uh, over I go. Oh, so this book still exists in this day. Okay. Let's read Failed Experiments. Except from a series of lectures on natural philosophy by Piero Joplin. Of course I have attempted to improve upon Sokolov's designs. Of course, and why not? After all, it is likely that his thinking was influenced in some small way by our time together at the Academy. We are all part of a community, striving to unknot the mysteries of the cosmos. Even those among us who possess the greatest minds are often led to a fruitful line of consideration by, how does one say it, our intellectual subordinates. Sokolov is no exception to this, despite the glamour of genius he has cast over the aristocracy. And further, it is true that many of my experiments have failed. No need to gossip about it behind my back in your social clubs and in the very chambers of the academy itself. Great ambition requires risks. You may laugh now at my door to nowhere. <laughs> is this a lecture? <laughs> Bitter. But someday you will not. Your children will likely see it as commonly as you see the electric lamps lighting our streets at night. But a few short years ago, you would have laughed at Sokolo's arc pylon or wall of light. Your laughter, your condescending smiles are nothing but evidence of your own limited imagination. <laughs> okay. Havelock stopped in earlier, but I forgot what he wanted. He's waiting to see you, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, he's reading whale oil processing, which is really short, but he's sort of moving his finger across it a whole bunch as if it were not short <laughs> and does not enjoy being lifted up and carried around as if it were children. Okay. Piero, no, I will not sign off on these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal? Tyvian ore? What's wrong with the metals in crystal? King Sparrow feathers? If you need feathers, sacrifice her own pillow. Maybe at the academy everything you needed was paid for by tariff and handed out willy-nilly, but this is my bar, or what's left of it, and we are operating on a budget. We're running low on oil, food, elixir, building materials, and everything else, so you've got to slow down. While I'm filling the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they're absolutely required. No more copper wire or special herbs. If you need those things, go out and scavenge them. Half the city is in ruins, so no one is going to miss any of the old crap you seem to need. Odd crap. Okay, and here's another one where he's probably going to be pissed off. Does part of the soul live in the heart? If the heart keeps beating, does that mean that the spirit is never released into Easy with you just sort of existing. Oh, hey. <laughs> because you seem to be fairly uh, unhinged and unseated. Oh, hey, what's this? Why did I just freaking stole his star? <laughs> Why can I just steal thing? Oh, hey. Okay. One of the advantages of the Sokolov's technologies is that they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. When a tank is exhausted, another can be plugged into place with ease, and the process is simple enough that any common workman or even the lower guardsmen of the city watch can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems, as well as the powered carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. 
The only obvious downside of Sokolov's designs is the volatility of the tanks themselves. A few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks has exploded. The Sokolov? Is that a, is that a guy or a people? Didn't they say I was a part of a Sokolov, so it is like a town or something, or a nationality, or... They share the same magnetic socket with what? Oh, whatever. Looks like they've got moving carriages here. Amazing! And, yeah, I got down here by jumping because there's a conversation in the the bar here, and I, I would have missed it otherwise, and hopefully I ain't gonna miss it now. Let's see if I can... <laughs> awesome! Yes, there, uh... I don't know if there's ever anything new in these rooms. I guess it's just the same stuff, possibly. Yeah, this whole thing does have a painterly sort of a painterish vibe to it. I guess that's pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Should I clear space for Samuel then? If you like, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore, or that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That pile of wood out there? It's a hobble he built from an old rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, what's your, what's your deal, Cecilia? Good day, Master Corvo. Yeah, well, you don't... Pardon me, you don't seem too happy there, Master Cecilia. Uh, I think I never went in here before. Hopefully I didn't miss anything on... That is so Metroid Prime music, which is cool, because I love Metroid Prime. <laughs> a Gaffer's Tale Volume 1, so I was supposed to read this first, huh? <laughs> okay, a Gaffer's Early Adventures. My sister Nina and I left Tyvia together, saying goodbye to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood, leaving behind our home city of Yarrow and the cold but beautiful white landscapes we had always known. We boarded a ship for Dunwall. Our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we spent half of this getting to the capital city and establishing a small import shop dedicated to Tyvian furs. Once I'd helped Nina establish the business, I was free to pursue my dream. Signing on with a whaling ship was the most exciting thing I'd ever done, and I saw it as a means to an end. Someday I would captain my own crew, and eventually own a fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the gaffer, I got to see the tracking and killing of the great beasts up close. Nothing had ever fired my spirit so as the wind and pounding waves, racing after a wounded whale, being pulled by a skein of cables embedded in its thick flesh. I changed more in those first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Whaling was beginning to put its mark on me so that Nina barely recognized me when I returned, tanned and sinewy with muscle, weather creases already wrinkling the corners of my eyes, but she could see that I was filled with joy, having found my purpose. So he skips right from the early days to the last days for some reason. I think the reading material could be more sparsely placed, maybe? Anyways. While each of the Isles has some form of naval fleet, none is more envied than that of Gristol, with its long, proud history of great ships and the admirals who command them. Boys come of age in the cities of Gristol, hoping to someday captain such a ship, and family dynasties are made by those captains who track down infamous pirates or crush seditious uprisings, as during the Morley insurrection. In times of war and peace, Crystal continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sokolov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing even as the ship returns to Dunwall. The crews can be seen working on their latest whale as the ship moves slowly up the Renhaven River, coming to dock with one of the powerful warehouse companies such as the Greaves Whaling House. Suspended in the rigging overhead and back lit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of these creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the industrial heart of the capital city. <coughs> okay. Well there, chipmunk girl in the radiator, now that I've not seen you at all, time to read. <laughs> it has been days since our men were dispatched to stash weapons for Corvo in the old sewer. They have not returned, so I can only hope that they succeeded in getting the packages delivered. Piero spent considerable time and resources making those things. If I could find a way to mass-produce them, the Dunwall Navy would secure its place as the dominant force on the globe. But back to Corvo. Can he actually break out of Coldridge? And if so, will he make his way here? 
I personally give him odds of one in five. A funny line to say. Also, I think I've fallen in with a bunch of people who talk nice but are actually evil. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Corvo seems to have arrived in good shape. Much better than I expected, given what I've seen of Coldridge Prison. He seems willing to work with us, and he shouldn't lack for motivation. The man has lost everything. We'll judge how he performs in the field. And if I can, I'll find a way to test him personally. Something really suspicious is going on here. I feel like this might not be quite as simple as I figured that it was. Eh. What is this? Is this that one guy's room again? <laughs> I really can just steal everything here without anybody caring? How completely silly. This is the same, isn't it? Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 27. Nope. In my thirteenth year, the despised stepmother at last departed and Pendleton Hall was again quiet. Although Father had by then sunk into deep depression, it was at this sensitive time that Waverly Boyle first entered my life. She who will be the source of many tender recollections to come. <laughs> really? Well, okay. <laughs> Are you a nobleman, Corvo? No one seems to know much about you. By your bearing, I'd say so. Lord Pendleton's great-grandfather took a Sokonan chambermaid to wife. On second thought, the story doesn't bear repeating. Even the finest blood can go bad here and there. <laughs> it's nothing to do with blood, man. Because, yeah. <laughs> also, it was Sir Conan that I am, not Sokolov. Obviously very confusing, and how do I even get down? This is what... <laughs> what? Well, this is one way to do it. It wasn't the way I was thinking I remembered, but, uh, yeah. Okay, maybe I can finally go on a mission now and stuff. Oh, man, this is so beautiful and blinding. It blinds me beautifully. Dunwall Whiskey. Well, okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would actually take... Oh, I didn't need that. I don't know how I would actually take a mission, but I guess I just sort of have to keep going, and I think Piero told me some blatant thing to do. Oh, hey. Weren't you just upstairs? What's wrong with these people? Well, let's get down to it. First off, I know that assassination is dark business, but sometimes good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Okay. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us. And if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Pits. <laughs> okay. But don't send him out again, because now everybody knows him. And what the heck did I just find in my journal? Travel with Samuel to my first mission. Oh, okay. I wonder if Piero was going to let me upgrade my stuff now. Hey, what's the deal with you? Oh. What? Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. Why did I just get out my stuff? I don't want to point stuff at him. Yeah, yeah, of course I'll do that. Jesus. 
And also, I haven't become an assassin yet, I haven't killed anybody yet. Jeez, come on. And yeah, I can't buy anything in the store here from Piero because apparently I missed a section where I could get an upgrade which was Zoom and, and other stuff. And I don't know why he won't sell anything to me now. Hey, you, what sell something. What can I do for you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> from all the stuff I robbed from you, I'll go back and buy some more stuff. Okay, upgrades. Here's what we have here. Okay, so we got accuracy, range, reload, sleep. Dart. I don't know why that's there when it's also here. Sleep bolt. But this is an upgrade. Whatever. Let me take a look. Still don't know what bone charms are, but I guess I'll find that out later or something. Anyway, yes, magnify my view. I'm gonna buy this. Because. Because. Work. Oh, I can't even buy the second level just yet. Okay, fine. Fine. That's, that's what I wanted. Now, I can zoom. And stuff. And apparently, if I were to turn the point of view back, I can't zoom, so yeah. Whoops. What? No, ah. Now I can again, okay. Now I'm ready. Or should I troll people and not go just yet? What is this? Is this something I've read? Excerpt from a series of newspaper articles from prominent natural philo- What's with all these natural philosophers? Okay, by bitter Brad Dourif voice guy who's awesome. It is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir over my own formula, Solus Piero's Remedy, a name I did not choose if you must know the truth. <laughs> this guy's crazy. The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way through the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted and it is nearly perfect. Elegant, in fact. And while it is true that Piero's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood, which relate to the mind itself and the spirit. And it is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is what, where one should pay attention to this contest, for you see Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is a crass goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variance in the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless blue-jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven River. I don't know, guys. I think this this whole setting story, backstory idea thing is shaping up to be, like, really interesting with all sorts of layers to it. But, uh, you know, I'm... I'm I'm going to take the next mission next time so to keep things a bit tidy this first time. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to have a look over here. I can't get up there. <laughs> so if that's the Hound Pits, then why is this the Hound Pits? Oh, well, I'm going to stop it here for now. So see you guys next time when I take on my first mission. Oh, yeah. Bye for now.